All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second week of the first year experience summer series. I'm really glad to see you all here. And um, I'm really glad to um, have you all here on this session, which is going to be talking about time management skills. I know we have a variety of very different um, audience members here. So I know we have some students who are going into their first year of college. We also might have some family members, relatives, um, school staff, administration staff, and everybody. Um, just anybody who's really interested in finding out more information and passing that information along to students who are going into their first year of college. So I might have met some of you at the first year experience um, kickoff, which happened on August 1st. Yeah, August 1st, um, but I'll go ahead and introduce myself for those of you who um, were not there and for those of you who might be seeing me. So my name uh, is Adriana So. This is Hannah Nishler, Kia Ani Bashishin, Sadish Gajni Dash Teik, Oge Dash Nalif. So I am Navajo and Chirahawa Apache. I am the Many Goats people, born for the Towering House people. Um, I currently reside in Gallup, New Mexico, which is just right off the border of the Navajo Reservation in New Mexico. Um, I recently moved back home. I used to live in um, Albuquerque, but um, life got too expensive and that's okay. I love coming back home and being back with my parents and just really spending time with the family and being a part of the community again. So, but um, yeah, I want to invite some of you. Um, um, I know we have a short amount of time here, but I want to invite some of you to come off mic and just give a brief introduction, your name, um, if you're a student or if you're working at a staff or at a school or somewhere and where you're tuning in from. Um, anybody want to volunteer? Uh -huh. No. Sure, I will. Hi, I'm Elma. I'm a Muckleshoot tribal member and I'm going to college out of Muckleshoot to Northwest Indian College and it's my first year and I just completed my first quarter, summer quarter. Awesome, congrats, Alma. Thank you for introducing yourself. So maybe we'll get two more people to introduce yourself if you'd like. Okay, if not, then that's completely fine. Again, this is your time and I want to be respectful for that. And we're here for until about four with my, my time, but um, I'll go ahead and share my screen. So again, the session is being recorded. So this will be viewable on our YouTube channel. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's at College Fund Org. Um, and that's where you'll find not only the session, but the sessions that happened last week as well. And if you wanted to watch Tori, um, Miss Indian World's wonderful speech again, I definitely encourage you to do that. It definitely got me ready for this week. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to be talking about time management and basically preparing for your first year, taking an inside look and um, sharing some tips and things that I found very useful during my time in college. So I graduated from Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado in December 2020. So I graduated during the pandemic, which was definitely an experience in itself. And my last semester at Fort Lewis was during the um, rise of COVID, well, during like the height of COVID really. And I did COVID um, November, 2020. So I had to take my finals with COVID in a hotel room that <laughs> I had to quarantine in with the help of Fort Lewis College. So I'm always very grateful for them. But here's the agenda I want to take a look at. So just to keep us all um, you know, on the same page of what we're gonna be talking about. So I kind of already started in my introduction, but I'll just play, be talking a little bit about my own first experience and um, just, you know, really defining who the first year student is, because I'm sure we can all, you know, give our own stories, and there's a lot of different diversity with what is a first year student, so we'll talk about that, and then we'll look at the timeline of a first year student, so um, I know most schools go by semester basis, so your fall and spring, but I know some also do quarters or tri-semesters, um, not too sure, but we'll be looking more about like the semester, just kind of giving an overall look and theme of what happens each month. And then we'll be looking at some examples of daily schedules of college students. This is where we're going to be playing into storytelling. And um, I have some really cool um, examples to show you of that. And then we'll start into building your own schedule where I'll share some time management tips 
and um, some other strategies that I found very helpful during my time and then and that I still find helpful honestly and then um, how to stay focused and motivated staff focused I, I meant to say stay focused and then we'll close with some um, final information and then the survey as well so like I said I graduated from Fort Lewis College in 2020 um, but I actually didn't start there I started at a small call private college in Oregon called Pacific University in 2020 2016. And this was my very first time being outside of the Four Corners region. So this was about a thousand miles away from home on the Pacific in the Pacific Northwest. And I had never really been to the campus before. I was just um let's see what Lathan said. Okay, Lathan from Church Rock, New Mexico, first year at University New Mexico University of New Mexico. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing, Lathan. Um, thank you for joining us. Well, you're just down the road from me. I'm in um, Gallup. <laughs> but yeah, I started at Pacific University and I it was my very first time being away from the reservation that far outside of the Four Corners. And I definitely experienced a lot of things such as culture shock, homesickness, FOMO, which is fear of missing out. You know, we have a lot of different things that happen during the fall time, especially on the reservation. And that might you, you might also have at your respective tribal communities, you know, tribal fairs, ceremonies, just community gatherings. And um, the way I kept up with that was just, you know, through family members or Facebook, social media. And then um, <laughs> this is funny because in Oregon, there's a lot of cloudy days, you know, it's very rainy, very cloudy. And I love that weather. I love getting away from the heat for a while while I was there, but I actually got vitamin D deficiency um, my second year there, I believe. And I was hearing about it from my friends who were also coming from very sunny regions like California, Hawaii and everything. Um, and I didn't believe it at first. I thought, you know, oh, I'm going to be okay. You know, I want to be in the gloomy weather. I want to be in the rain. I want to be in the cold. It didn't hit me till my second year, my sophomore year, where I found out that vitamin D deficiency is definitely something real. So um, that definitely took a toll on my mental health, on my motivation and being homesick and culture shock didn't help at all. But um, I found some ways to cope, especially with my friends and community there. And then I was also a part of a Voyagers program, which is a pre-orientation activity, which you might find or might have been a part of at your own institutions. So this is essentially, you know, like a student, a summer bridge program where you get to move on to campus early and get to know, you know, the campus or you get to do like an activity. So like for me, with the Voyagers program, they had very different activities. So you could go, um, you know, camping, backpacking, hiking, surfing on the coast. And I signed up kind of late. So I got the very last option, which was the urban pursuits. But I liked that because I got to tour around the whole city of Portland because the school was about 30 minutes outside of Portland. And I got to know, you know, the whole environment and get to know the surroundings, you know, while I was there and everything. So I definitely enjoyed that. I got to meet a lot of great people. Us, um, posing over here by the statue, that's the group that I did the Urban Pursuits with, and I'm still really close with most of them and everybody. And I also, you know, found a lot of community. Um, this was a school that did not have the most um, Native or, you know, people of color, students of color attending, but they did have a fairly large amount of students from Hawaii attending, and I found a lot of community with them and a lot of similarities in the way that we grew up and everything and our, even our own cultures. So I met my best friend while I was here, and she's from Maui, Hawaii, So, and we're still really close to this day. Uh, some other ways I started to get involved on campus was working at admissions. I was, you know, volunteering as a campus tour guide and also just helping in the admissions whenever they needed with applications, call outs. And then in advising as well, I worked at the front, front desk where I got to meet most of the liberal arts professors because I was helping them schedule their one-on-ones with their students. And then any students who were coming in to change their schedule, change their major, declare a major. And then um, I also worked at the post office as well where I got to walk all over campus, um, give students their um, packages or mail. So that was a really fun experience. And I did all this working with work studies. So um, for those of you who are aware or not aware, work study, you can declare with the FAFSA application, which, is, well, which opens every year. And um, the work study basically is you make money for work. It's just kind of like having a job, but you get to look on campus and any of the money that you earn, you can use it for yourself. You can use it to pay off bills, tuition, whatever. That's just your money that you can use. 
joined, I joined clubs as well. I stepped out of my comfort zone. I joined a rugby club. I did rowing for a little bit. And then um, I also did, you know, business club because that was my major French club because I was taking French classes and just, you know, a lot of things that took me out of my comfort zone to really get me out there into um, the student life. And there was a lot of learning experiences. You know, I did fail a class my first semester, which didn't think would ever happen. Um, I did pretty good in high school, I would say, but um, college was definitely something very different. The structure of classes, really setting up your own schedule. And then um, I did face discrimination, unfortunately, since it was a predominantly white institution, um, which hopefully none of you will experience, but um, you know, it just kind of happens. And then I did have some roommate drama because I did stay in the dormitories and my roommate and I just, something wasn't happening there. <laughs> and then I'm um, also again, setting my own schedule and trying to find and manage my own time as well, trying to set up my own schedule. So a lot of what I'm gonna be telling you is, past experience from my own experiences and also from, you know, working with other students when I was um, working for the student life. And then also um, just, you know, from hearing from my other colleagues and everything. So who is your first year student? So usually we hear the two terms used together. So any traditional or non-traditional student that is attending college university institution for the first time at the undergraduate level. So just a few things to de define those things. So undergraduate level is basically you're obtaining, you're attempting to obtain your associates, bachelor's or certificate of some sort. And traditional student, this is starting to change now, but usually in like the higher terms, uh, the traditional student is someone, as a student who has obtained their high school diploma or a GED and immediately goes into college. So they graduate in the fall, in the spring, and then they go into college in the fall that same year. And then um, non-traditional student is somebody who is going to back to college after a few years. So maybe they didn't go to college right after high school, they worked, they had a family, you know, life happened. And now they're, you know, just going back to college. But, you know, this is always changing this narrative. And this first year experience program is for anybody who self-identifies as a first year student, needs a refresher, anybody who can find our information and resources useful. So. We don't want to do any, um, you know, hard definitions here. And you also may know or might have heard of um, freshmen. That's essentially the first thing as a, um, the same thing as a first year student. It's just more institutions are starting to utilize first year student over the freshman term. So now let's look at the first year timeline. And if anybody has questions um, or, you know, has anything, um, definitely you can come off mic, you can raise your hand, or you can wait till the end when um, we open up the question or open up the floor for questions. So like I said, um, the first year timeline, we're gonna be looking more at the semester by semester. So fall and spring, but just, take note that your institution might run on a different so there's you know trimesters there's quarters but um I have more experience with working with semesters so that I'm just going to be using this one but there's definitely going to be a lot of like the same themes as well so you'll see so in the fall timeline you know usually school or orientation new student orientation will happen within the beginning months of the fall semester. So June, July, sometimes it'll even um, happen during August. And some colleges will have first year bridge programs occurring during this time, like I mentioned. So just something to kind of help all the new students get onto campus and learn about or be on campus first and get that advantage. So I also have some important questions after all these two to ask yourself. So for this time during orientation, you would ask yourself, you know, when do I move into the dorms if you're living in a residential hall? Or when does the semester begin? When is the first day officially of classes? And then we move into August and September. And that's usually, you know, when the fall semester starts. Um, and the first few weeks, you'll be reviewing your classes, your class schedules and class syllabuses and adjusting to your class schedule. So finding out where each of your classes are, um, what times you need to be there and then kind of really getting a feel of when you have time to eat lunch or to grab a snack or to kind of rest to do homework go to the library meet up with friends or pick up you know maybe your family member you know just anything you get to really know what your schedule is and um, a really important date to take note of is when is your ad drop date this might also be known as census day this is going to be when the last day is to add any classes to your schedule let's say you know you, you're one of your friends has a class that you're really interested in, but you're not a part of that class, you can always request to add that class. 
or you have a class right now that you're not really sure you can make time for or you're not ready for it quite yet, then you can always drop that class and it will not reflect on your transcript. And then anytime after this date, it will add on to your transcript. And then for October, usually this is when midterms happen. This is just going to be a checkpoint to see how you're doing in classes before the final exam. So there's usually two big exams. Um, usually some classes will have it structured differently, but it'll be the midterms and the final exams. And again, this is the checkpoint time. Do you, I understand the first material. Who can I reach out to if I need help? You know, do you, do I need to talk with the professor and the instructor? Do I need to seek out tutoring? Do I need to set up some time with my classmates? You know, maybe to go over a few of the material just so you're all aware of it. And then November is crunch time. <laughs> I just labeled it as crunch time. And this is the time where you start to prep for final exams. And then you also start getting notifications to register for your next spring classes. So that'll be through your student email. And this is when you ask yourself, is everything ready for spring semester? You know, is my classes ready? Did I get everything set in stone? Did I get um, all my, you know, things paid for? Did I apply for my scholarship? You know, a lot of different things to ask yourself. Just really getting ready for that um, end of semester. And then December, that's when finals happens. It can last anywhere from one week to two weeks. Um, and this is when your spring semester ends. So you completed your first semester. <laughs> I shouldn't say first year, but your first semester. And this is a really good time to reflect. Um, also, just to rest. This is a time where you're going to go into your winter break to rest, take some time with your family, or, you know, you might have other things to do, but, you know, just to rest from school and ask yourself what worked, what didn't work for me this semester. Was there a <clears throat> class that I really enjoyed that I might want to delve into a little bit more? Um, was there a place on campus that I really liked sitting at that I could focus in? Um, was there something that didn't work for me? Maybe this one class didn't work, so I don't want to do that again. You know, a lot of reflection happens at this time and also getting ready for your spring semester. And that usually happens around January, maybe the beginning or the end. And this is also another time, you know, to take note of important dates and review your class syllabus. And then also ask yourself, you know, what are my goals for the semester? Thinking back to how you were reflecting on your fall semester, what do you want to do differently or what do you want to continue or what are your goals for this upcoming semester? And then for February, um, this is kind of the same, but also a really good time to prepare for your next year. So after spring ends and you'll have summer semester or summer summer break, I should say, and then you go into fall again. So it's that same cycle. So for summer, you know, some institutions do summer classes. So you can always take those if you want to get ahead or if there's a certain class that you want to do. A lot of um, classes will also do like traveling during this time, like a short two week travel class. So you can also do that if you're interested in, but you'll see a lot of different opportunities. Um, do you want to start working? Do you, is there an internship you really want to, you know, try out for or anything? But really your first year, if there's a lot of time for you to just kind of think and to figure out what you want to do, or, you know, you don't even have to declare what you want to major or minor in during this time. But for some students, they already know what they want to go into. So that's also good. But if you don't, then that's fine. You really don't have to declare your major or your minor until like your sophomore year, give or take to the institution. And then for March, we have midterms again. So again, that's just a checkpoint to see how you're doing in classes before your final exams. Asking yourself again, do I understand the course material? And do I know who to reach out to if I need help? And then April is crunch time again, um, but you have a little bit longer of a timeline to get ready for your fall semester. Um, maybe again, you know what you wanna major in, what you wanna study full time, or maybe, you know, there's also the possibility um, that you might wanna transfer to a different institution, or maybe you wanna take less classes or something. So these are some really important um, things to think about and questions to ask yourself as you reflect in your first year. And again, really taking um, note to your schedule. Was it too much? You know, did you have, very, very many like minimal breaks in between or were you a little bit overwhelmed or did you, were you okay with your schedule? Was it just right? Or maybe you had a 
you know, lesser schedule where you had more time to do things. So you want to take on another class or you want to find a job or you want to do different things, you know, so it just really depends on what your schedule is. And then May, June is again, when finals happens. And then this is when you can really celebrate that you completed your first year of college and it'll go by quick. It will really go by quick and um, you'll be getting into your second year from here. So now we're going to look at the examples of some daily schedules, but just for now, do I have any questions? Nothing in the chat. Okay, we'll go ahead and keep going. And then if you guys have anything at the end, we'll open up the floor for questions again. Um, <clears throat> but this is where I really took into my storytelling abilities. So I always love creating little examples with, you know, native culture and everything, whether it's, you know, traditional culture or pop culture and Indian country and stuff to help uh, my students really visualize things, you know, because we're storytellers naturally. But before that, let's define a few words. So um, you might have heard me throw around this word, but credit hours. So credit hours is a form of measurement for most colleges, universities, and they use that to track how many credits a class is worth. So usually, a class, one class is worth about three credit hours. So, and then, you know, some institutions, they might have a class that's worth four credit hours. It really just depends on the institution. And then a full-time student is a student who's taking 12 or more credit hours. So if you divide 12 by three, that's four classes. And then a part-time student is anybody taking less than 12 credit hours. So it can be one to two classes, anything less than 12 credit hours. And then a first generation student, I really want to highlight this because we are going to be having a session and a discussion with a good friend of mine, Brittany Betsilly, tomorrow, um, talking about what it means to be a first generation student. And this is a student who is the first in their family to attend college or university. And then internships um, is when a student works in an organization in order to gain work experience or to satisfy requirements for degree or qualifications. So um, I took two internships while I was in college and they were all for credit for my degree or some students take it just to get that experience, work real life experience and everything. So with the second or third actually season of Reservation Dogs just releasing the final season, unfortunately, um, I wanted to take some of the characters and kind of create their own little stories here just to visualize how everybody's schedule might be different and, you know, one of your friends or another classmate of yours might have some other responsibilities or something completely different than what yours is. So your schedule is completely catered to what you know and what you, where you know where to go and what you need to do. So for Cheese, I know they're all in high school, or I think he might be in middle school. I'm not too sure during this, this TV series, but we're going to look a little bit into the future. So Cheese is a first year student at Haskell Indian Nations University, and he's um, trying to attempt a Bachelor of Arts in Creative Writing. And he is a first generation student. So he's a first student in his family to go to college. And he does live off campus, so he doesn't live in the residential hall. And he's a caretaker for his grandma so that, you know, he has to take in, take note of how many hours or when he needs to be home to help take care of his grandma. And he is a full-time student, so he's taking 12 credit hours or more. And in the fall, this fall, he will be taking 12 credit hours, which is four classes, and approximately spends about eight to 10 hours on homework per week. So these are just some, you know, time frames that he needs to keep in mind to help track and to make his own schedule of where he needs to be when he needs to you know carve out time to do homework and then also enough time to spend with his grandma and to help you know cook her food or you know to you know just really care care for her so now we're going to take a look at rita who is bear's mom and she is a non-traditional student at the college of muskogee nation and she is in the Associate of Science in Tribal Services program. So she's obtaining her two-year degree. And she is a parent and has a full-time job at the local IHS. And she works more than 20 hours per week. And she also lives off campus. And it's about a one-hour commute to the campus. So that's how long it takes her to drive or to get to campus. And she's a part-time student this semester. She'll be taking six credit hours, which is two classes total. 
and she'll spend about two, three to four hours each evening on homework. So again, another full plate schedule of things that she needs to do. She has a child to take care of. She also has a job that she needs to attend. And for her classes, you know, she might have one that's fully online, so she doesn't need to go to class. And then she might have another one that she actually has to be on campus for class. So um, when these things happen, you know, it's really important to work with your job, whether it's a full-time job or a part-time job, to let them know of your schedule, your class schedule, so that you're not, um, you know, interfering or clashing in any of these two. Is it true you have to carry 12 credits to receive scholarships? That's a good question. So it just depends on the scholarship. I know for um, the American Indian College Fund, the full circle scholarship, you do have to be a full-time student. So that means you have to take 12 credit hours or more. But in some cases, scholarship program again, they will either know that you need to be a full-time student requirement or it'll also say, you know, part-time. So it just depends on the scholarship, but they should say, but if not, um, it's always good to ask them, you know, do I need to be full-time or can I be part-time? And they'll um, work out with you. And they you might, you know, um, recommend more scholarships for you to, to apply for if you're part-time. Okay. And then lastly, we have Alora. And she is a full-time student at the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And she is in the Bachelor of Arts in Cinematic Arts and Technology program. So she's a film student and she will be graduating with her bachelor's in the spring in 2024, so next spring. So she's really busy, you know, trying to um, complete her classes, stay in good standing with graduation. And she also has a filming internship in the fall of 2023, so this fall. And she does hold two leadership roles in club. And she does hold leadership club roles in two clubs. So she might be president or sending on student senate for two of the clubs. And then she does live off campus with a few of her friends as well. And in this fall semester, she will have 15 credit hours, which is taking five classes. And approximately she spends about 10 hours on homework per week. So looking at these three, um, example, as you can see, everybody has their own different schedule, their own, you know, daily lives and routines that they kind of have to set themselves. And um, it's a really good example to see, you know, it's really good to look at the timeline or your own timeline, look at the calendar and note out really important dates that, you know, are coming up. So like I mentioned, the ad drop date or when your job when your job schedule is so you know do you work on weekends do you work evenings on weekdays um do you need to be somewhere to pick up your you know children or your, your grandchildren or you know anybody your dependents do you need to carve out time to go to this conference you know it's really important to have a schedule to help yourself visualize where you need to be and to keep yourself organized as well so now we're going to look at that how to build how do i build my own schedule so building your own schedule, it's really important to find the tool that works for you. So this can be anything from a planner, an online calendar. Um, you know, most schools will have, will give you a school email and those emails will usually have a calendar link to it. So you can use that or you might have your own personal email. Like I use mine, um, which is Google Calendar. That's really important. And then um, you might also use reminder apps as well. So, you know, um, your phone usually has notifications to help you remind you of certain things. You can set timers. And then again, like I mentioned, to note important dates, the census day, school closures is another, another really good one so that you don't end up on campus when everything's closed. <laughs> I've done that a few times. But I'm just, you know, looking at the syllabus especially. And then most schools will also have an academic calendar on their mm -hmm. website to note these special days that you need to um, take note of. And then exam days. Um, here's a pro tip to find out when your exam days are for your classes. Your class syllabus, which is usually given to you when you are in your first week of classes, will have that semester outline, including exam dates and deadlines for big projects or papers that to, you need know, to take note of. So again, that's another really good thing to take, um, you know, write down, jot down in your calendar and your schedule and your planner. And, you know, you can see how long you'll need to like work on that and everything. And then another good tip is to use color coding. So, you know, you can set deadlines, you can highlight them in yellow if you want. And then any personal events, maybe you have a birthday party to go to, there's a ceremony happening or, you know, like a powwow or something you wanna go to. So you wanna carve that time out as well. And then maybe you wanna use green um, 
to note that that's your personal event or you have any club meetings. So, you know, maybe you want to be a part of the ACES, which is American Indian Science and Engineering Society. I can't remember what it is, but it's the, the, the club for STEM Native students. Um, but yeah, just kind of noting all those different things and color coding really helps you organize your thinking and it also helps make important items and deadlines stand out so that it doesn't slip your mind or anything. And I know for a long time, I like to depend on my own mind to remember stuff and everything. And for the most part, it was working really good, but um, it's always good to have something back backup as well. So writing it down on a to-do list, on a little notepad, on a schedule, or again, really utilizing like an online calendar of some sort. And then the other biggest tip that I can give you all as well to help build your own schedule is to establish a routine to help you stay on track of all aspects. So, you know, you don't have to jot it down in your schedule. You don't have to set alarms or anything because it'll, after you establish your routine, it'll come naturally. But the time you wake up on the weekdays, on the weekends, when maybe you want to, you work out, maybe you go to the gym, you play basketball. Um, maybe, again, you have a job. Maybe you go <clears throat> do some things throughout the day. You have to run errands. You have to carve time out for you to go to sleep. I don't know. <laughs> you know, a lot of different things to help you establish your routine will be very helpful for you to um, know where where you need to be, when you're going to be busy, and then also time that you know you'll be available if anything should come up, like an emergency meeting. Um, Maybe you need to pick up an emergency shift at work or you want to go hang out with friends, you know, it doesn't always have to be something, you know, with work or academics or anything. Um, just, you know, if you want to go hang out with friends, if you want to go grab dinner or lunch or something with them, you'll know what time you have available to, you know, go do what you want to do at leisure. So I have my examples and let's see, I have something in chat. I highly recommend ACES if you are a STEM student. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for mentioning that, Brittany. If you are a native STEM student, definitely look into ACES. They have a lot of really great opportunities and um, the network is huge. You know, you can really, they have a conference every year and you can really meet a lot of great native professionals in STEM that will give you opportunities. And just to have them in your network as well is just really amazing. I had the chance to go to an ACES conference in high school in my freshman year and um yeah it was really really amazing so definitely take advantage of those opportunities but yeah so here are two examples of what my schedules looked like when I was in college this is more like my junior senior year so I utilized my google calendar again and I definitely utilized color coding to you know see what classes are and then like different deadlines when I have to go to study sessions or when I'm meeting one-on-one -on -one with my advisor. And then I also love using paper copy, I mean, paper planners too, um, just because I love stationery. I love pens, highlighters, markers, everything. So <clears throat> I love check boxes as well. And check boxes for me, help me visualize what I've gotten done. And then it's always good at the end of the week to see and to check off that final box and everything to see, you know, what you all got accomplished and stuff. And it also helps like, you know, your mental health and everything to see that, you know, you're really, you really are busy. <laughs> um, but you have classes, important dates, your um, homework that you need to do, um, what community events you need to go to. I have my advising appointment right there. And, you know, just really good to write these things down. Um, you don't have to make it as colorful as I do, but you can just write them down just so you have it written down in your mind and then in your, you know, physically. All right, so some more time management tips. Um, the first one is to plan out your week. So usually I set Sundays um, and Sundays are a great day to reset and plan out what needs to get done or what's coming up for that week. So any important appointments you need to go to, classes, your job schedule, um, you know, other things that might happen throughout the week. Um, it's always good to plan that set out. You know, I like Sundays just because that's the beginning of the week. Really sit down what you need to go, where you need to go, what you need to do. And sometimes your schedule can get pretty, you know, congested just because you might want to, you might sign up for a lot of things, you know, not really knowing what you have time for and stuff. Um, so it's always good to prioritize, pick out the deadlines that are the most urgent and the items that will take the most time. And, you know, that can be 
you know, school related, when your big papers do, when you have a test that you need to study for. Um, but it's really good to prioritize those things just that way that you don't fall behind in your classes or in anything, you know, that you might need to take note of. What a to-do list help as well. Yeah, yeah. So to-do list, you know, you can use a you can use a sticky note. You don't have to get fancy with it. If you want to, you can, but you can just use a sticky note sticky pad and um, you know, make some bullets of what you need to do. You know, I need to go talk to financial aid. I need to make an appointment with my advisor just to help yourself, you know, keep on track of what you need to do and everything. That's a good question. Thank you. And then get creative to avoid distractions. So, you know, our phones are probably our biggest distraction. Um, for some of us, it might be, you know, we might be in a home where we have, you know, kids, children, or, you know, you might live with, you know, roommates of your friends. And it's really easy to get distracted, you know, talking to them or scrolling on your phone on, you know, TikTok or Facebook or everything. I know I'm always on TikTok and that definitely makes me procrastinate on a lot of things that I need to get done. So it's really um, good to try to get creative with your distractions. You can, you know, put your phone on do not disturb or, you know, sometimes we need our phones though, because just in case, you know, we have any emergencies come up or anything, or you have dependents that you need to have your phone on for at all times. Um, you can try focus apps like Flora, Flora and Forest. Forest is a really cool one that I tried for a while um, when I actually started working at the college fund. And um, you download it onto your phone or you can download it on your desktop. And if you, you know, stay off your phone for so long, you can water a tree, like virtually you can water a tree. And the more that you stay off your phone, the more the tree will grow. And then you can kind of grow your own, own garden and you can see it on your um, your phone and everything. So I just, you know, little cute things like that to get creative. You can also use the Pomodoro method. I always have a hard time saying this, but the Pomodoro method is basically <clears throat> you set aside 25 minutes of your of focus time and then you have about a five minute break in between I feel like I believe I think or you can also you know um you can also you know make it flexible to you so let's say you like to do longer bursts of focus time so you can do 15 50 minutes of focus time and then you can do like 10 minutes of breaks so you can go you know walk around use a bathroom scroll your phone if you want to but um just you know setting yourself like that doing like a little pattern can be really helpful too if you like to establish that and then also asking for help is another really important thing too chances are your other classmates might be struggling or having a hard time as well so if you're in class if you're in a class and maybe the subject that you're doing right now is really confusing. It's always good to ask for help because, you know, your other classmates might not be, they might be confused as well. So try to reach out to your instructor if you're feeling overwhelmed, you know, if they're assigning too much homework or not giving enough time for deadlines, you know, chances are your other classmates are probably feeling the same way and would appreciate, everybody always appreciates a little extension on anything that you're working on. So it's always good to ask for help. And then lastly, Staying organized um, is a really, really big thing. And that's why I'm talking so much about, you know, creating your schedule, whether that's the planner or the to-do list or using a calendar online. If you're taking more than one class, separating notes and other handouts can play a huge factor in saving time as well. So, um, you know, when you're in class, you have a notebook, you can have a notebook set out for each subject. So maybe you're taking one math class, that can be the green folder, for science, it can be the red folder or, you know, just kind of setting it out, color coding like that again and keeping everything separated can also help you stay organized. You know, if you need to go back to your notes or you need to go back to a certain handout or homework assignment that you utilize to study again or just to see how you did it or, you know, just to find your notes on that subject. So it doesn't, you know, conjumble your mind and everything and everything is where you need it to be too. But also, with some people, um, they like to work with chaotic mess as well. Like I know I do. So I have things set on my desk where it's not necessarily the most organized, but I know it's there. So, so it just really caters to um, what really works for you. Where's my mouse? All right. So with all of that, you know, I gave you the tips and everything, but there's also a really big factor in time management and <clears throat> really just staying focused and motivated. So we're gonna look at a few things to help us 
stay grounded in this and also to help us stay motivated as we get into the bulk of you know academics and getting back into school and everything and then also kind of bouncing back if you feel a little lack of motivation so the big thing i want everybody to recognize and to acknowledge is that life happens you know it's something out of our control sometimes most of the time and you know it doesn't matter if you're in college or if you're at work or anything life doesn't freeze so there's a lot of different things that might happen and it's very easy to get distracted or to lose motivation so maybe there's something happening or a big event happen and you just can't take your mind off of that for some reason and there's going to you know, there will be some times when that happens, and maybe you already experienced that, you know, when back in school, or in your, you know, past life and everything, so it's really important to identify what draws your focus away from your studies and assignments, and, you know, it can be your phone, you know, spending too much time on your phone, um, you know, being distracted when you're with your friends, talking with them and everything, and not getting enough time to do your homework or studies, um, maybe it's another factor that's happening personally, you know, you don't have to share anything, but just to identify what those main things are that are dragging your focus away, you can journal about it, you can talk to a friend about it, a family member, and then also you can also look at your resources on campus. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of campuses out there have mental health resources, they have counselors, and um, there's just a lot of different things out there that are available too. If you ever need to talk to somebody, if things get overwhelmed, you know, and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I'm always going to say that because life happens and it happens out of our control a lot of the time. So it's not your fault. And then maybe you need to change locations. A new scenery can definitely refresh your mind. And, you know, it can be maybe you're sitting in your dorm room or maybe you're sitting at home or you know, somewhere that you usually do work and you're just not finding any motivation and you don't want to work or do anything. So maybe you can get up and go for a walk. You can go for a run, go work out, or maybe just go to the library, go sit outside for a little bit, read your book. You know, just changing a scenery gives you a refresh in the mind. It's kind of like, okay, because if you spend too much time at like one place, you know, there's a lot of memory that can be held into your space. So like, you know, I work at my desk at home. So sometimes, if I get too, you know, busy or overwhelmed with what I'm working on, sometimes I'll move over to the kitchen table or I'll go down to the local coffee shop or something, you know, a really nice change of scenery really helps a lot of the time. And then another big thing too, I know everybody has their own individual grounding exercises, but these are really, really essential to help you kind of remind yourself of where you are, <clears throat> bring you back to the present time right now and try to clear your mind of all things that are like making you stressed out right now because you know a lot of the time we can get caught up in what happened what's going to happen tomorrow what's going to happen in the future what do I need to do for the next five years am I behind already should I have done this already we can get really caught up in our minds a lot you know so it's really important to try to ground yourself and to remind yourself of where you are right now so I'm going to do a short little grounding exercise and um, you can participate if you want you can have your camera on you can turn it off if you want but um we like to call this the five fingers <clears throat> so everybody just you know get into a position that you're comfortable in you can sit back in your chair you can lay down on your bed you can stand up if you want lay on the ground you can put your palms up you can close your eyes you can wiggle your toes you can stretch you can do whatever you want and I'm going to ask you, you know, just to clear everything that's in your mind and try to just exist in the moment right now. So um, right now, just try to identify one thing you can hear. So it can be my voice. It can be your fan because it's hot. It can be maybe the dogs barking in the background. Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just you're blocking my voice out and you're just kind of enjoying your own peace right now. And then I also want to ask you next, you know, what can you smell? Maybe somebody's cooking. Maybe you can smell, I don't know, like the outside, the fresh air. I know it's monsoon season down here in the Southwest. So we like to keep the windows open when it's not windy and smell the fresh rain. Um, maybe you can smell, I don't know, maybe you can smell your feet. Like, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but you can, you know, just identify what you can smell out there. 
And then now you can think about what you can taste. Maybe you just ate something. Maybe you just take, took a sip of water, tea, coffee, Gatorade. You know, maybe you don't taste anything. You just kind of like, you know, don't taste nothing. And then now you're going to um, feel, or you're going to talk about what you feel, or you're going to think about what you feel. So maybe you're sitting down on a chair, you're laying down on a bed, you can feel the mattress, you can feel your blankets, you can feel the fan on you. Just like really try to think about what you can feel. And now you can open your eyes and you can just kind of, you know, stretch out, wiggle it out a little bit, maybe, you know, move your neck around and everything, take a stretch. And I like to do that exercise a lot just because it helps ground me, you know, when things get really overwhelming and just bring you back to the present and think about what's happening now, how can I control now? And that's a really good exercise for you to control your surroundings now because we can get really overwhelmed when things get, about, get out of our control. And another thing too to ask is what are your values? What why are you in school right now? Why are you in your position right now? You know, why did you choose to go to school? Or maybe why did you choose to take the job that you did? Why, what is, what's your goal? What are your values? What are your motivations? You know, maybe a lot of, you know, common answers that we get from this question are, <clears throat> you know, I want a better life for me and my kids. I want a better life for me and my community. I want to give back to my community. Or I want a better life for myself, you know, or I'm really interested in science and I want to make a difference, you know, with our, um, with the health of our community and everything. So there's a lot of different things and you are your own individuals and you all have your own backstories, your life stories, your motivations, your goals and dreams. And I just want you to never, never, never think that you can't achieve anything, you know, because it'll take some work, you know, nothing happens just like that overnight. But as long as you know where you're coming from, what your goals are, what your motivations are, what are your values, then that can really, you know, support you throughout whatever journey or pathway you go. So with all this, take care of yourself, you know, time management isn't just about getting work done, it's about including time for yourself. Um, keeping your mental health, physical and emotional health in balance, as well as your spiritual as well, you know, um, maybe you take part in your cultural practices and your religious practices. Um, those are just as important as well as your mental, physical and emotional health. And have things to look forward to can be having things to look forward to can be helpful when going through stressful periods. So it can be, you know, finishing the semester. It can be maybe you're going on a big family trip, going to the lake this weekend, going um, camping, going hunting, you know, having a powwow or like a family gathering or, you know, just a lot of different things. Or maybe just making it to the weekend where you can finally have some rest and not worry about classes or anything. Having those big things can be very essential to motivation and getting you through, you know, your week. <clears throat> and then if you're struggling on an assignment project, step away and do something else. Like I mentioned, you can go walking, you can, um, I don't know, go get something to eat, go get something to drink, make sure you're staying hydrated and you're feeding yourself and you're taking care of your body. Or, you know, you can go into the living room or you can watch something on your phone for a little bit, you know, just to get your mind off of whatever you're working on right now so that you can come back with a fresh mind. And then, um, oh, like I said, going for a walk, laying down, closing your eyes and stretching. Stretching can make a whole lot of a difference. I am such a big motive or I'm such a big advocator for that. Like anytime I feel, you know, tense or anything, I always get up and stretch and I'm always sitting here on my chair stretching and everything. When we sit through meetings, you know, I'm always stretching. I can't really be set still for too long. So, but that's just, you know, how I take care of myself. I like to keep moving and everything. And I see we have two things in the chat. So Elma, what if I'm off campus and I don't have access to college? Is there Zoom meetings that can be available? Yeah, it really depends on um, who your advisors are or you know who is working in your student success center or your professors as well. Um, I know a lot of colleges and everything are still recovering, of course, from um, COVID and the 
uh, lockdown and everything. So um, a lot of colleges have started to really develop their online resources and support for students who are online and everything. And that has been something too of offering more online classes for students so they can outreach more and everything. So um, it's always good to reach out, you know, to your, whether it's an advisor or maybe you're trying to reach out to your professor let them know, you know, I'm not on campus, I'm an online student, or I can't be on campus, can we work out a Zoom meeting or something, and I'm, I'm more than sure that they will work out something with you. And then would you also be a first gen student if a parent did not did go to college but not get that degree. Um, that's a good question, I guess. In like the higher terms and everything no because that parent did go to college. And they went through that college experience, but you know college is changing all the time and depending on when your parent did go to college, a lot of things might have changed during that time so there's still a lot of firsts that you can. Um, have that you can experience while you're going to college and everything so I know my mom also went to college for a little bit, but she didn't obtain her degree as well, but in like when I was filling out FAFSA or like all these documents and everything, they were still considering me a first generation student so I guess I don't know. It really depends. I can't give you a solid answer on that one. Okay, so we're wrapping up on time here. <clears throat> um, and I just want to end off with a few more notes. So what does a successful semester or quarter look like? And that completely depends on you. You know, there's a lot of things and a lot of terms on how we can identify what success is. It can be numeric, so that can be, you know, having a high GPA, having good grades and everything. That can be success if you consider that success, if you think that is success, if you feel good about having those and obtaining those and achieving those, that is success. Um, it can be value too, you know, it can be maybe you joined a club you really enjoyed. It can be, you know, you have a clear image of what you want to do for your field of study, you know, what you want to study, you want to major in. Or it can be you completed the semester or quarter, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can identify what success is and um, in a lot of ways in Western society, you'll see, you know, that a lot of success is defined as, you know, how much money you're making, what your GPA is, what your grades are and everything, and that can be success. But the really big thing is that it all depends on you. If that's success for you, that's success. If success for you is getting through the semester, that is success. So lastly, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off is one of my favorite movies, and this quote has always stuck with me, and I really want to share it with you all, and it's life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So we get so busy and everything in our daily lives and stuff, but it's really important to take time for yourself and to just relax and exist in the present, you know, like we're doing with that grounding exercise. So thank you all so much. I hope you took a lot of great things from this session. And um, if you have any questions, if you ever want to reach out to me again, um, my name is Adriana So, and my I do work with the College Fund as a college success coach. And I'm also the lead for the first year experience program. So I've been the one um, that's kind of like planning all this first year experience summer series. And my email is right here if anybody wants to get back in contact with me. Let's see, we have something in the chat. When you have to complete FAFSA, can this be anytime? So FAFSA usually opens on October 1st of every single year. So um, usually you have until the next year, like a full year to do it. But they, everybody always advises you, financial aid and everybody always advises you to finish it as soon as you can, just so that you can get all the benefits from the Pell Grant if you qualify for that. So I can't give you a specific deadline, but it's always to try to get it done as soon as you can. And it always opens on October 1st. So for the next coming school year, 2023, 2024, that will be um, open on August or um, October 1st, sorry. But yes, thank you. I had another really good question here. So <clears throat> with all of the sessions, we do have, let's see, we do have the Zoom link or the survey links. Um, so this is the week two session that we're heading into. So for all the sessions this week, you will need to fill out this week two session survey if you want to be entered to win any of the door prizes. So I'll go ahead and put that right here. So uh, we do have, we are going to be doing it on a tier system. So 
Um, for any entry, you can have as many entries as you want. If you attend one session and fill out one survey, you are entered to win a $50 gift card. If you attend two sessions and fill out two surveys, you can be entered to win one of the Sony wireless headphones. Um, if, you end, if you attend three sessions and fill out three surveys, you'll be entered to win one of the Amazon Fire tablets. And for the grand prize for any of those who are go-getters, if you attend four or more sessions and um, fill out surveys, you will be entered to win a, lap, a Lenovo laptop. So all the week one sessions have been posted on our YouTube channel. So if you wanna go back and watch those, you can. <clears throat> that YouTube channel will be right there. And then you can fill out the respective week one survey for that one. And then all the sessions, again, will be recorded. So those will be able to view on our um, YouTube channel. And um, if you have any questions, we'll be also contacting you through the newsletter and our Native Pathways social media. And all surveys will close on September 1st. That'll be one week right after the um, summer session ends. So if you have any of the you know, videos you wanna watch and you wanna fill out the surveys for those, you can, you know, get your submissions in and everything. And then we will be, um, I don't know if you can see my cat. <laughs> we will be um, sending the, the award notifications to those who have won a door prize. And then lastly, we do have a closing celebration happening on August 24th. And that'll be happening on Zoom again. And it'll just be closing out the summer series for first year experience. And we'll be having a student panel there. So if you have any questions that you would like to ask the student panel, I definitely encourage you to fill out this survey. You can also use the QR code on the screen right now. But um, this can be, you know, any question revolving around your first or anything revolving around being a student, you can ask them about their experience, um, you know, financial aid, how they found more scholarships, how they found internship, or what are they going to go into for the career? Anything you want to ask them, definitely uh, give them, let's see, the survey does not have this event as an option. Ooh, let's see. Let me double check that real quickly. But yes, if you have those questions, oh, okay, I, I sent you all the wrong one. So let me see. Yeah, if you have any questions for our students, please um, send and submit a question throughout that. So let's see if that works. Okay, that link that I sent, that one should have the, um, the sessions for this week too on there. But yeah, thank you all so much. Um, again, this will be recorded and, or it is recorded and it'll be on our YouTube channel. And we'll see you all this week again. Um, we're gonna be having the first generation talk with Brittany tomorrow. And then on Thursday, we will be having the um, persistence in the face of adversity. And that'll be with Cherietta, who is a first year advisor at Navajo Technical University. And she'll be talking about you know, a little bit more about what I was kind of going to about um, bouncing back from any negative experiences or, you know, trying to get motivation after anything. So, but yeah, I'll stick back here if anybody has any last questions or wants to get any more of those links, but thank you so much for attending and we'll see you all very soon and good luck on your semesters. Thank you.